Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorts Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the icon in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. This is the narrated step by step tutorial for my painting, Wired. The photograph on the right was a reference for this painting. And you can see that this is not an attempt to create a literal translation of the reference photo. This painting focuses more on color temperature, value contrast, and positive and negative shapes. These are two quick value studies that I did in my sketchbook to experiment with the light source and value patterns. This is the sketch for my painting. It's a fairly complex sketch and it's on a quarter sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So it's 11 inches by 15 inches and I'll be working at about a 20 degree angle. Before I begin the painting, I'll do a quick review of the paints that I use for this painting. Quinacridone Gold, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Rose Matter Quinacridone, Quinacridone Coral, Blizzard Crimson Quinacridone, Quinacridone Violet, Manganese Blue, and Royal Blue. You'll notice that I'm using a lot of Quinacridone colors. These are probably most of the Quinacridones I have on my palette. And that's because this is uh, primarily a dominant warm painting. And my reds and some of my golds and violets tend to be uh, quinacridone formulations because they're more light fast than some of the other formulations out there. So that's why there are so many quinacridone based colors that I'm using. Before I begin to paint, I'm going to do some light masking using liquid mask. I'm going to use a bottle here that dispenses a fine bead. And this uh, composition has a lot of linear elements to it, has wires hanging and uh, I don't want them all just to be dark valued. I want to have some light valued linear elements. And because I want to stay transparent, I'm going to use this masking fluid to uh, protect the white of paper uh, in some of these uh, areas where there's going to be some light linear elements. Now some people would just come in at the end and use gouache or some op opaque paint and put some white lines in. But I like to stay transparent, so I do this in advance. And then I'll come back at some point during my uh, painting process and remove this masking fluid. It's very difficult. It looks very forced to try and paint around these types of lines when I'm putting down big washes as I'll be doing. So to me this is a very effective technique to use in this application. I'm going to begin uh, by applying a light wash using a one inch flat brush. And this is some quinacridone gold that's been toned down a bit with a little bit of red and a little bit of uh, manganese blue. And I'm just uh, being liberal. I'm able to go over the areas where I've masked with a masking fluid and don't have to worry about painting around the linear uh, elements in my design. And I'm painting around some of these shapes and I'm painting over some of these shapes. So I want to want to try and tie this whole composition together uh, early on with this uh, kind of a unifying wash. So I, I'm not necessarily painting uh, individual elements, individual shapes or objects. I'm I'm looking at larger areas, larger shapes of, of that, uh, color, and this is going to be very light value at first, but it's going to set the uh, color that scheme that I'm going to be using uh, as I develop this painting. As I put this wash down, I'm using one of my value studies as a guide for uh, the light source and the value pattern that I'm using. And this, this is still very light value, very, very light value. The, these. Uh, colors are going to get more intense and the values are going to get uh, darker as I develop my painting. 
At this stage, it's still very light. I could have gone darker and leaned more towards a middle value, but I want to gradually build these values up. I don't want to get too dark too soon. Uh, you can always go darker, but it's hard to go lighter. So um, you can see that I've got a, a variety of warm and cool uh, throughout the wash, but it's going to be primarily uh, a warm composition. So it'll have a warm dominance. This is thoroughly dried, and you can see how light the wash I put down is. Uh, like I said, I could have gone much darker with that. Um, I'm going to start to develop my values now. And as I do this, I'm thinking about the light source uh, to determine where I'm going to have my, my middle values and my dark values. The colors I'm using right now are manganese blue, uh, quinacridone burnt orange, some uh, rose matter quinacridone. And I just uh, switch from one to the other and I let these washes just kind of blend. I, it's really one wash. I'm just using multiple colors and I let those gradate from one into the other. So you can see it goes from cool to warm back to cool in that area that I've uh, started to put a middle value. I'm continuing to add uh, this wash on the, some of the shadow sides of the building and I've switched to a half inch flat brush but I'm still using the same color combinations at this point. And here again I've switched from cool to warm that's quinacridone and burnt orange. And I'll, I'll stress again how I'm not painting individual objects right now. I'm looking at the larger shapes. I'm looking at the whole shadow side of that building and that shape that it makes. And you can see how that value runs uh, uh, into the, the area underneath the gutter or the overhang of the roof. And I, I didn't paint those separately. I painted them as, a, as one shape. I'm going to continue this wash down in the lower uh, area of this side of the structure and I'll bring it forward somewhere that's kind of an L shape. And there's an interruption uh, where a, a roof line wraps around. And one of the things to keep in mind is you don't necessarily have to, to depict this the way it is in your photograph. I'm certainly not overall. My interpretation is not a, uh, a local color interpretation. But in terms of light and dark, on this side here, this might uh, be in shadow when you think about it, uh, where, where the light would hit. But it might be more interesting if I break that shape up and that value up with a light shape coming across it. So if I feel it's better design and more interesting, I might do something that maybe it doesn't necessarily make as much sense when you when you really analyze it, but it makes for a more interesting painting. So my point here is don't just copy everything you see in the photograph. Uh, everything is subject to interpretation and expression. So uh, make a painting. Don't copy photographs. I'm going to go a little darker and a little more intense with my color now. Um, still working with some burnt orange. I'll be working with some uh, mixtures that have some uh, rose matter and some royal blue. Uh, that's a violet tone that I've put in there. And I'm working with positive and negative areas here. So right now there's this roof line that moves across the front, but it's uh, interrupted in several areas by uh, wires, by uh, railings and bars and, and elements that are part of this structure. So uh, by painting the space between all these elements, I start to define those elements. And little by little those elements will evolve and come forward without me actually painting them if I choose to leave them the white of the paper.
which I'm going to do in some of these areas. Some of these railings are going to be white, and that's why some of those areas I've masked to make it easier to protect that area. In other areas, I'll paint around. But I'm working a, a lot in negative space right now. I find it much more interesting when you're going to put down a value uh, when you change colors within that wash. If, if I were just to, to paint this area that I just painted across here, this value just blue or violet or orange, it wouldn't be near as interesting as it is when I'm shifting between warm and cool from violet to blue to orange to red violet. It's just much more interesting. And if you struggle with getting this type of gradation uh, in your wash, just practice on some scrap paper. Practice transitioning from one color to the other. There's a separate structure here on the left side of my composition and I'm going to treat it just like I did the, the side of the building to the right. So I'm using the same colors, quinacridone and burnt orange, some manganese blue, some royal blue. And you can see I'm still pretty light valued throughout the painting. I haven't really gone too far with my values. I'm going to paint some of the windows on the front facing side of this building. So there's some interesting shapes that will um, start to be revealed here as I paint this. And these are some smaller shapes. These, so this area here is going to have some, a variety of uh, large shapes, small shapes, linear shapes. It's going to have a variety of values. It's going to have white, middle, and dark values. And you can see that I'm doing some color changing there. Here I'm starting to introduce a little bit more of the rose matter quinacridone and starting to get some red violet tones. Here I'm continuing to bring these window shapes across. You can see from the left to right how many different shapes I have. And they're not all the same. They're uh, a little bit different in length in some areas. They're a little bit wider. And I've broken them up a little bit differently. And then they have other shapes that interrupt them. So it's uh, the same type of a, a window shape, but there's a lot of variation within that. I've painted several of those window shapes across the front. Now there's some on the side here that I'm going to uh, paint with a little bit darker value here to give an indication that there um, are these windows here on this shadowed side of the building. And as this progresses, uh, I'm going to get darker here and some of this may uh, start to uh, fade into a darker wash, but you'll still see the subtle value change underneath it if I glaze over it. I'm continuing down the side here and uh, I'm switching to a half inch flat brush. Sometimes when I'm painting these windows on structures I'll use a round brush and other times I'll just use a, a half inch flat. And you can just make a nice uh, expressive brush stroke and leave it with a half inch flat brush. There's not a lot of filling that you have to do. Uh, just make a mark and move on. Going back to my round brush and I'm going to be working with a middle value here and I'm going to change between some blues, some violets and uh, start to define some of the, the shadowed areas on this uh, utility pole that's here. And you can see that I, I break some of the marks that I'm making up. I'm painting the underside of a, uh, one of these boards that crosses the main pole. And uh, I'm not just painting a straight line underneath it to, to indicate the shadow. I'm breaking it up some so it's more interesting. Um, and it suggests that there's some overlap or there could be an object blocking the view there. And um, those uh, lost and found lines just like lost and found edges, the eye will complete as the viewer looks at it. 
as I've painted this, I've gone from a blue to a violet and now to more of a red violet. I've been stressing in a few of my recent videos to, to try and think about color more in those terms. Violet, red, violet, blue, red, yellow, yellow, orange, yellow, green. And, and don't get so caught up in all the names of paints that manufacturers use. There's a, there's a host of them. Um, but in the end, what you're trying to mix is something that appears on the color wheel or the sphere of color. Um, and, and it helps if you can start to think about that um, in that way. Um, you won't be as dependent on capturing the name of every tube of paint that somebody uses when they're painting. Not that it can't be helpful, but at some point you need to break away from the names of paints and realize well, that you're working with colors off the color wheel. Now I'm going to introduce some of this burnt orange to bring a warm tone into this. I've thoroughly dried this and now I have my uh, round wash brush and I'm going to come back over this sky area here with a little bit more color intensity. I could have gone much brighter and a little darker with my initial wash um, but I kept it light and kept it toned down but I can always start to strengthen that, strengthen the value, strengthen the intensity. I'm going to bring a little bit more of the cooler tones here in this sky area. I'm going to uh, soften that a little bit as it moves into the, to the warm area there, just to help that transition. I'm going to remove the masking fluid. And you can see all the linear uh, elements that I have in my composition because of where I put that masking fluid. Now some of these I'm going to be glazing over uh, but they'll remain light so not everything is going to remain white. Um, some areas are going to be light shapes but uh, using the masking fluid to, to preserve those lighter areas is still uh, an effective way to do that. Next I'm going to just do some brushwork on top of the washes that I've put down. This is going to be more calligraphic uh, accents and also just painting some smaller shapes. So I'm just using a, a round brush here. This is a number four round brush. It's actually a uh, synthetic brush. It's a Princeton Aqua Elite and it maintains a nice point. So I'll be using a variety of mixtures here, some violet, some uh, a darker red orange, uh, some blue, but using those same uh, colors that I re uh, reviewed at the beginning of the video. So they're all combinations of those. Here you can see there's a, there's a railing here. This is actually an area where I had some of the masking fluid. And now I'm accenting it with a darker value. These are actually just middle values. And I don't uh, normally draw just complete lines, so I'm not just going to outline this railing. I, I interrupt my line and break it up. It's more interesting that way. And I'm still very much on the light side of middle value. I haven't really gone that dark in this painting yet. I'm developing it slowly. There's times when I go a little quicker and I get a little darker, a little faster. Or a little more intense with my color, but I've just chosen to bring this painting up gradually. Here I've switched to a quinacridone and burnt orange. And I'm just painting in some of these smaller details. As I add this brushwork, I'll move around the entire composition. It's how I like to work. I like to bring the whole painting along as a, as a total composition and, and gradually bring up and develop the whole painting as opposed to just focusing on 
one small area and filling it in and then moving to the next and filling it in. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to, to, to work or you have to find a, a painting process that works for you. And this is just the way I like to work. So I start with these lighter values, bigger shapes, and I start to work into darker values with more detail, smaller shapes. Uh, this is later, I'll add more calligraphic marks and I start to put some linear elements in there. And you can see I'm just uh, accenting some of the edges, some of the lines, and I'm just doing it with broken uh, lines or just short dashes and then just little marks. I don't fuss too much, I just make my mark and then I move on. And I think uh, line, I've said it in a number of my videos, is something that people overlook. Line can help define edges, it can help build depth. When a line stops on the edge of something and comes out on the other side of that, that shape, it suggests overlap, which in turn starts to build depth into a painting. To this point, the colors I've used uh, have been pretty pastelish, the mixture, so I'm going to start to get um, some more intense color into my painting. This is a quinacridone and burnt orange. I like the quinacridone and burnt orange over burnt sienna, which I've used uh, quite a bit in the past. Uh, I think it, it can be used for many of the same things, but it, it's a... Uh, just a more vibrant color so I really uh, like that I have added this to my palette and if you look at this painting overall if you were to use a value scale on this uh, a value checker you'd see that I'm very much uh, in the light to middle value range I really haven't gotten very dark so as I start to progress here I'm starting to bring in some of these darker values so I'm just building these layers, going from white to light to middle value to dark, and going from larger shapes to, to smaller shapes. And, and I start to get a little bit more precise with my brushwork. So here I start to define edges, and I'm using line, I'm using some small washes. Here I'm doing some negative painting around some of the elements in the composition here, the wires and the, the little uh, boxes that hang on the wires in the, in the roof here uh, that's behind it, the, the small strip of rooftop here that kind of overhangs this first story of this structure. And um, when, when I paint this, I really don't use the, the reference photo much because I'm not really I'm not painting the reference photo, that's my subject, and I've used it to create the drawing and, and uh, come up with the forms and everything in here, but my colors are my own and the areas I choose to bring out and the areas I decided are going to be negative space versus positive space, space, those are mostly decisions that I'm making on my own. I'll glance at my value study occasionally. But I'll go ahead and I'll insert the reference photo just so you can take a look at it. I know people like to look at that. Um, but we'll take a quick look at it and compare how this is developing. So when we look at the reference photo, you can see that I'm obviously not trying to copy this. I'm not using the colors that are in it. I'm not using local color. I'm using my own colors. And I'm picking and choosing the areas where I want to have more detail and where I want to have more focus and uh, the value patterns are on my own. There's really not a strong uh, source of light in the photograph so I've decided with my value sketches where that light was going to come from, what was going to be in shadow, what was going to be in light, where I'm going to start to develop some darks. Uh, so I really don't use this uh, reference photo too much at this point. I still glance at it but I've made a lot of decisions on uh, what to include, what not to include. For instance, if you look at the photo, there's a lot of uh, boards that, that are on the siding of the house, but I really didn't feel like I wanted that element in this painting. I'm, I'm more or less using the main shape of the building, a lot of the uh, wiry elements, uh, and those are, the, those are some of the key things that I wanted to have in this painting.
want to start to differentiate uh, the the side of the structure that's being illuminated by a light source and, and the other sides which are in shadow. So I'm going to start to glaze over some of what, some of what I've already put down. Um, as I had said, I could have gone darker earlier, but I just wanted to build this up slowly and I'll just build some layers until I get to the value and intensity that I'm after. You can see that this wash isn't just one color again. There, there's a, a, a gradation of uh, this kind of a red violet into a, a gold, into some blue, which has turned it a little bit green because of the interaction on the paper. I've thoroughly dried this and now I'm going to get much darker and much more intense with some of the wash that I'm uh, putting down. I'll be uh, blending one color into the next just as I have been as since I started this, but the color is going to be uh, more intense and darker value. So that, that bright gold is, a, is a, a pretty pure mixture of quinacridone and gold and then I've gone into a violet and a, and a blue, but they're, they're very dark value. And there is some painting around shapes here. So I'm, I'm working on the, the outer or negative edge of, of a shape and I'm just bringing this darker value around it. And you can see if I had a value scale here, how now I've really started to go darker with my value. And in terms of color intensity, it's stepped up also. So it's a, a much higher uh, chroma value of the mixture that I'm working with right now. There's another area here that has a a bend in the, the wall here where a small uh, part of the building comes out and that's going to be in shadow. I'm going to paint it a darker value and um, I'm going to keep it uh, the cool tone that I have already in the, uh, the base wash that I have on this shape. I've begun to paint an area here towards the top of this structure. And if you notice this wash, I've started with a manganese blue, then I've gone to a quinacridone burnt orange. You can see how it's gone from a strong cool tone to a, a strong warm tone. And then I'll also notice how there's uh, a connectivity with the, with the shapes. I have that, that shape that I just painted that's underneath the overhang of that roof. But I'm carrying that same value and those colors right into the side of this building. So I didn't paint those separately. I didn't paint the, the underside of the roof by itself and then come in and paint the, the gutter on the side by itself and then paint the wall by itself. I'm still thinking about large shapes as I develop my painting. And sometimes this would have been uh, tackled a little earlier if I'd gone darker sooner. But uh, even at this stage, I'm still thinking in, in areas about large areas of value because I don't have enough depth in this painting yet. I don't have enough value contrast. It's still a pretty flat looking uh, painting. As I start to build these values though, you're going to start to, to be able to see more uh, of the form here. More, It's going to seem more three-dimensional. It's not going to be as flat. And you're going to start to see that depth in the painting. I've thoroughly dried this and another thing I've done off camera is I've taken my masking fluid and I've gone back over a few of these lines because I want to go much darker 
uh, on the sides of these and I want to maintain those lines so I decided just to, to mask back over a, a few of these areas where I'm going to be putting a dark wash on I don't do that very often but it was a, a good way to continue to preserve these lines and um, I go much darker with my washes than what I've done so far. As I apply this wash, I'm using a, a violet there, a little bit of a red violet. And you can see those go into uh, grade 8 from one into the other with a very nice transition and they can mingle and it's not going to uh, muddy the paint too much you're not going to lose the the intensity of the color because you're working with analogous colors there but now i'm going to start to bring in some quinacrin and gold and a lot of mixing of these colors on the paper and i start to get some grays because we're, we're working with colors on opposite sides of the color wheel but i'm working wet on dry and i'm applying this in a manner that it's just a continuation of my wash so i'm not doing a lot of mixing on the paper they're, they're, it's more of a variegated wash, although I'm working on dry. You normally do that on wet on wet. Um, and I do get some grays, so I do get some neutrals, but that just helps pop the intensity in the areas where the, the, the color is more pure and much more intense. But I'm applying this as a, as a single wash, and I'm just changing the color that I'm loading in my brush as I bring it back to my brush back to the paper. But it's a much more interesting wash than just a plain flat one color uh, wash. This brushwork can be very repetitive so I'm going to speed it up here for just a, a short stretch and I'm going to continue to narrate on this. So this is more of the same type of brushwork that I've been doing However, I'm working with some more and more dark values. And you can see some of the areas that I already painted that were pretty dark looking when I put them on, but as they dry, they dry much lighter. So I can continue to develop these until I'm comfortable that I've uh, fully explored the, the value range uh, when it's dry. So here you can see that I keep coming back into a few of these areas and I'm uh, coming in with darker values and I'm not just painting over what I've already painted there's breaks and there's uh, uh, shapes that are, are, are partially divided or defined with a line and, and those layers all start to come together and work as a unit so when I'm done here I'll have these layers of light value white paper middle value and dark values so w even though I keep coming back into some of these areas it's kind of a planned approach where I'm slowly building up these values and developing the area but I don't just keep painting over the same shape over and over and over and just cover up what I had I just add to it and accent it and sometimes I'll come back over and I'll glaze over here's an example of where I'm glazing and back over an area that I've already have a base layer on So I'm back to normal speed and I'm going to take my wash brush and I want a little bit more color intensity in this sky. This is the third time I've come back into this and I'm also going to glaze over some of those areas where I had masked the linear shapes uh, to, to represent the wires. And I'm going to glaze over some of those so uh, they're not going to be the pure white of the paper but they're going to be a light value, they're going to be a lighter value than the surrounding area. So I've uh, preserved that white of the paper, but it allows me to come back over uh, with a glaze and you'll still see uh, the, the linear shapes coming through, but they'll be coming through as a light value rather than the pure white paper. I'm gonna continue to bring that glaze down over the whole sky area. I'm also painting over some of the areas of the pole and I want to bring some of that glaze on top of the building and so some of those areas that are pure white I'm going to glaze over with this uh, gold tone 
And that's going to help unify the, the composition. It's going to bring some unity to the painting because those colors aren't going to be isolated in, in little pockets that, that this gold tone is going to wash over some of the lighter areas of the structure. I'm going to put that glaze underneath some of the, the areas where it's overhanging. I'm just going to let that come down. See, these are the types of things that you're not going to get out of your, your reference photo. These are decisions that you have to make on your own. I want to soften that and just let that run down the face. So I have some areas where it's glazed and I have some other areas where the white of the paper is going to remain. And it just kind of, it's nothing that I drew in. It's just, this is where you react to what's happening in your painting and, and keep some of those uh, surprises that occur. I'm going to bring in a, a little stronger color also on the other side of this sky with a, a combination of a red violet, violet, blue violet. So I'm just taking my wash brush and then I'm going to soften that a little bit with some water and blot it with a tissue. There's a building here in the background that I want it to be a toned down. I don't want it to be the pure white of the paper, but I'm still going to keep it a, a, a light, the light middle value. So I'm going to put a, a, a glaze of uh, a light blue violet, red violet, violet mixture. So that starts to, to separate that, that distant building from the, the structure that's closer to us just by toning that down. I'm going to put some darker values on this utility pole and I want to maintain clean edges. If I have a lot of irregular edges it's going to be a distraction. So I'm going to use some rice tape uh, on either side of this pole and put it down and smooth it down with my finger and the rice tape creates a pretty good seal and it doesn't damage the paper when you lift it. So I'm going to use this to uh, help allow me to maintain clean edges. If I did it freehand, uh, I, I could do a pretty good job, but there's a chance that I might go off track a little bit there in that light sky and uh, or have a, a bit of an irregular edge and the more I fuss to try and clean it up uh, the worse it'll probably get. So uh, this is a, a nice easy solution. I can put down some nice dark values. I can let some colors kind of mingle as I do this. And I don't have to worry about trying to maintain a straight edge at the same time. So I've got my quinacridone burnt orange. Got a violet mixture. That violet is uh, some 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 of that is the quinacridone violet with a little bit of blue in it and some of it um, sometimes is a mixture of uh, alizarin crimson and royal blue i've thoroughly dried my paper now i'm going to pull off the, the rice tape and you can see that i've maintained uh, a clean edge So far, uh, the linear marks that I've made for the most part have, have been the ones that I masked. So now I'm going to take a liner brush, this is a number one liner brush, and I'm going to uh, make some of these linear marks using a dark value. Sometimes it'll be a bit of a violet tone, sometimes it'll be a, a warm uh, burnt orange mixture. So. I'm, I'm not getting too fussy with these. I'm just making some quick uh, brush strokes to indicate that there's a, uh, a utility wire there. And some of those come off the, the cross members on the pole and, and wrap around and um, some of them go behind, some of them go over top of other things. 
So it, this helps. This is another way to help show some depth in the painting. And I'm going to put some of this dark value to accent some of the areas where I've preserved the white of the paper and left a, a light linear mark. I'm going to come back and I'll touch it just like it's a, a shadow on, a, on the other side of a otherwise highlighted utility wire. Well, I know I'm suggesting that these are utility wires. To me, I, I see it more as calligraphic marks uh, that just make the composition interesting. And some of these, how they twist around, they go at different angles. Some are longer than others, some are shorter, some are uh, straighter than some, some have a, a sharper radius to them. So as I make some of these marks, they're influenced by what I saw in my photograph, but I'm, I'm putting them in here, putting them in here in a manner that I feel is most interesting. And then, uh, you know, these wires have some little um, clamps and, and various hardware elements on them, so I try and suggest those in a few places. And you can see I'm not at all, at all trying to render something I see. I happened to, to notice in the photograph there was a few wires that had a tight arc there and they kind of overlapped and I picked that up. Um, but uh, it's, it's really, I'm putting them in the areas I feel is going to help the design. There's a few insulators that are up on the poles and, and are on the wires, cables. So I'm going to give a suggestion of those. I don't want to go overboard here because I, I don't want this to be the uh, where the where the viewer just immediately goes in and gets lost. So it's just some some uh, subtle suggestions of uh, of this activity of these wires wrapping around and these insulators clamped on wires and on cross members here and 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 the wires kind of tangling through each other. I'm going to do a bit more brush work uh, across my composition and uh, these are more calligraphic marks and here I'm introducing some dark red violets that help tie this a little bit to some of the other areas of the painting but this these, these are again these are, this is some linear brush work where I'm, I'm using it to define edges or um, uh, just highlight specific areas of the painting just to, to give a little bit more contrast in, in a certain area. This isn't something uh, again that you pick up from the painting from the reference photo. These are this has to come from you uh, as the artist. And here you can see I'm going on what would be an inside edge of that window and potentially in shadow but I don't want to do them all the same, so I, 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 don't, I don't just do the exact same thing in every window. Now I want some uh, stronger accents on the, the utility pole. Here I've got the, the burnt orange. I, I like to call these accents because they're just another layer on top and they're just complementing what's already been done in the area or this or in the shape. So this takes some of this nice rich burnt orange to this uh, utility pole and it helps tie it in more to the rest of the composition. Here I've got a, a, a very dark blue violet. So this is giving me some more um, of, a, of a cool dark value on this left side of the painting, just as that warm 
uh, burn orange that I put on the, the utility pole and some of the wires up there helps tie it to the to the right side of the painting where there's a lot of that activity this uh, dark cool tone helps to start to tie the left side here to some of that type of activity that's already going on on the right side of the painting just trying to achieve a balance across my composition So as I get close to wrapping this painting up, I'll summarize a little bit about the process and, and how this evolved and, and, and what my objective in this painting. It was not a, as I said at the start, it's not a literal interpretation of my photograph. This is more a, um, an interpretation of that subject that isn't at, all, isn't at all using local color. It's my own color scheme. It's uh, my own uh, value pattern and light source and I've chosen as I've gone and as I've developed this where to make many of these brush strokes as I've as I've moved through my process it's not that uh, there I, didn't, I don't get guidance from my photo or from my value study that I did in my sketchbook but a lot of this is just the painting process and um, it has to come from you, the artist. Where I'm making some of these brush marks, I'm trying to uh, achieve something. I have a purpose. I don't just randomly uh, put my, my marks down, although they seem random. I'm trying to define edges and I'm trying to bring uh, stronger contrast to an area or bring attention. There's reasons for making the marks that I'm making. I'm trying to balance the overall composition. But this painting was less about trying to create a historic rep record of a, of a subject. It was more about shapes and color, warm and cool, and, and working in positive and negative space. I'm gonna put a mat on this so we can get rid of the tape and the board. And there you have my painting, Wired. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online courses, click on the box on the screen and it'll take you directly to the Learning Center page of my website.